following podcast is presented by Secret Room Multimedia. Also known as Cybernetically Reinforced Android Initiated Guy. Oh, hey, I'm the Gavison. Fair Point Podcast is a show where these two guys, hey, that's my name, don't worry about No, not that kind of guy. The kind of guys that like to talk. They talk and talk and talk. I've never seen anybody talk so much. Never trust somebody that doesn't stop talking. It's like they're trying to hide something. Keep it secret. Keep it safe. Hey, blurry photos. Why don't you crack this mystery? What are they hiding? Welcome to the show. That is so hard to impersonate. Oh, my God. <laughs> Impersonating I, Robin, I don't know how Robin Williams does that, where he just like goes I, off on a tangent and, and I don't even, improvs. I don't even think I did it right. <laughs> no, it's, it's was, unduplicatable. There never will be another. Jesus, who can. that you no, you really don't understand how awesome, how you can't really fathom how truly great what he did was on a regular basis, improving that shit. Until you've tried it. Rapid fire Until you just tried it like that. Yeah, every time. Just try to do an impression of Robin Williams as somebody. You can't think of things to say fast enough and like voices to do fast enough. I dare you. All joviality aside, for just one moment here, uh, last week, as I'm sure all of you know, the world lost a very dear and individual, unique, awesome fucking entertainer and... uh, I don't know. Yeah, great uh, fatherly father figure, uncle figure, like guy. He was the one with the wisdom, yet he's still gonna be your cool, fun, uh, funny uncle. It's almost it, it. Really is like losing a member of your family. Kind of. We all grew up. Robin Williams is a big part of our lives. You know. Absolutely. Which all those double movies. sucks for me because I found out about the passing of Robin Williams on the way back from my uncle's wake. So Jesus. yeah, so I was like, oh come on, man, like. Really? But, yeah, uh, we don't want to focus at all on the death. Everybody else has been doing that and beating it down, Yeah, there's so. all sorts of places you can look if you want to know more about the details of his, of his death. And- We're not going to get into that because we want to remember him the way that he wants to be remembered. We want to celebrate his life. Laugh. We want to cover the, the long, storied life and career of this guy. There's all sorts of stuff that can be said about suicide and and how tragic it is. Yes, especially and, when a uh, beloved figure. We beloved already by many. did that. Check out our uh, episode thirty-eight. Shameless. I know. We'll go look at that episode. But no, really. If you're if you're interested in what we have to say, uh, episode thirty-eight, the John the Rambo, Rambo episode. episode. Yeah. Or there is no goo. Yeah, Philip Seymour Hoffman and uh, Justin Juario Carmichael. We we talked a lot about their passing and about. Suicide in general and losing a beloved figure in the public eye in general. And uh, not that Robin Williams just deserves the stock answer. He doesn't. That's why he's getting his his own own personal entire episode. episode. Yeah. So keep listening. We're going to talk about Robin Williams movies. We're going to talk about his life. It's we're going to try. Like I said, we can't avoid the fact that he died. It may or may not come up, but it's. Not the focus of this episode. Um, it's it's very sad. It really is. We also did the ice bucket challenge today. <laughs> <laughs> we are soaked. Well, not anymore because well, I I brought a change of clothes. But yeah, I changed. But still, it's like my undies are kind of wet. I've got long hair, so <laughs> a little different. It's for gonna you, take right? that a little while. <laughs> like I'm almost at dry level at this point, but. Yeah, we we did a video for the ice bucket challenge to, which if you're not aware, that's to promote uh, what is awareness it? and raising funds for amyotrophic lateral sclerosis or ALS. We responded to the challenge. We called out our good friends, one last shot, blurry photos podcast, and stand up comedian Brandon Dyer. Yeah, guys. So you're you're up to the table too. 
Yeah, you got to uh, do it. Donate and douse. <laughs> and go check our video out, guys. It's on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Fairpoint Podcast. We had fun with it. It's, it's also not... going to be on our uh, Facebook probably. Yeah, of course. It'll be, you'll find it on the Facebook. We'll post it everywhere. Go find it. Uh, we had fun with it. We hope you guys yeah. enjoy it. It's, you know, you get to see your favorite podcast one. hosts or your least favorite podcast hosts get doused with water and the chili. So what, are you the Syracuse least favorite and I'm the favorite weather. or is it the other way around? No, I, I Or imagine. are both of us? Oh, oh, you're dragging me down with you? It's, yeah, it's okay. both. It's all or nothing. Damn it. You know what I realized last week? A couple weeks ago, we did a South Park episode, South Park Elementary. We talked about all the kids and, you know, the characters at the school. Yeah. If we had waited one week, that episode would have came out on the 17th anniversary of South Park. Oh, my God. <laughs> we would have... We would have christened its 17th birthday. Just like almost happened with uh, Amelia Earhart. Amelia Earhart and who was the other one? Uh, it was the Lake Champlain Monster. I oh, yeah, Champ. Champ Day. It was Champ. Champ Day. It was Champ. Why it didn't was I his know? day, it was Champ. All right, so this is the news section of the podcast where we look at a couple wacky, wild, crazy, or interesting news stories that caught our attention. Wacky, wild, or crazy, you say? Or interesting. They could just be interesting. Or sometimes none of the above. (laughs) Coming out of the rumor mill leaked details about the new iPhone 6. Oh, yeah? Yeah. There goes one labor off your list. Got it. Yeah, so... September 9th, Apple's reviewing it at this big conference. Yeah, Apple's holding their own event to showcase the new iPhone 6. September 9th. You probably won't be invited. It's okay. Neither will I. I'm cool with that. But uh, supposedly it's supposed to be smaller, like smaller as in thinner. Uh, It has a bigger screen and a longer battery life, which that's what I want. I want better battery life. Okay. Okay. Because you just don't last long enough, especially once I turn on data, forget about it. (laughs) That battery's gone in like an hour. How the hell am I supposed to watch a season of Breaking Bad? Yeah, no, shut off. But shuts (laughs) off. Netflix account deactivated. (laughs) Did any of you remember hearing back in April when the affiliate of Wu-Tang Clan, Andre Johnson, the rapper, not the football player, cut his own penis off? No? Oh, no. I figured you probably hadn't heard of that. What? Yeah, that happened in April of 2014. Wait, who's that? Who is Andre that? Andre Johnson? From, he's who just, is that? He's just a random rapper who's an affiliate of the Wu-Tang Clan. Oh, he's an affiliate. Okay. Yeah, not okay. a member. He's an affiliate. Not, okay. Yeah, I mean, he, like, pretty much everybody's in Wu-Tang. So he got all that's, high that's, on drugs. That's pretty fucked up. He's not even in Wu-Tang. I mean, no, he shit. must be bad. He Me and you suck. were in Wu-Tang. <laughs> Blurry Photos is in Wu-Tang. <laughs> last <real>. I heard. <laughs> Wu-Tang is a pretty big, diverse group. So, yeah, he's trying to get more attention, I guess. So he cuts his penis off, and he I jumps... I don't this news story. Yeah, he jumps off a balcony into a pool. Uh, I, I don't... Well, anyways, that's not why it's news. You thought that was because he was trying to get attention? No. Um, he must seriously have some sort of problem to be able to yes. cut his penis off and then well, jump into a pool. He was on drugs. Okay, that, that's a start. <laughs> but he said it wasn't the drugs that did that. He was in complete control. Why this is news is because just recently he came out saying why he did it. And what did he say? He wanted attention. <laughs> was it he the said, was it the witch of Bograth? Was no, it was it a he said monster he needs from a J.R. Tolkien uh, uh, book? No. Damn it's, it. It's much funnier and dumber. He said, and I quote, I need to focus on my music and I and <laughs> since sex is <laughs> since, Sex is for mortals, and I am a god. I do not need this distraction. And he cut it off. And he was in complete control when he said that. That wasn't the drugs talking. He says. Oh. Yeah, well, have fun peeing, dude. Oh. You, you may be a god if you think so, but you still have to go to the bathroom. Sex is a distraction. So is general hygiene and having a functioning fucking body. You know it's not a distraction? Genital mutilation. <laughs> next, move, next news story. Moving on. Uh-huh. I don't like not this one. Not so crazy, wacky, or kooky. <laughs> Wu-Tang I'm Clan ain't norm. nothing to fuck with. <laughs> that yeah. was his position. <laughs> He's real. like, I cut it off because that's something you fuck with. <laughs> and, Wu-Tang and Wu-Tang ain't Clan. nothing to fuck with. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, we know. We're members. You're not yet, Andre. Maybe. <laughs> things we know, things that you're just learning, apparently. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> Just the facts. Robin McLaurin Williams was an American comedian slash actor. He fucking rocked. Robin Williams was born July 21st, 1951 in Chicago, Illinois. Chicago, you say, huh? Chicago. Uh, to, you know what I realized the other day? I was playing Munchkin. You ever play Munchkin? It's, uh... No, I've never played. I don't own Cthulhu Munchkin. So you do? Yes. I was going to say, you've played Munchkin with me before, haven't you, once or twice? <clears throat> yeah, you actually taught me the game. It's a fun game. It's like it's a, a great game. tabletop card game. Not like a collectible card game. Not like a 52-card deck game, but like you just buy the set and you, you play it with your friends. And it's and a fun party game. And stuff. I was playing that and I realized the most fun combination of words to say is to say plutonium dragon with a uh, Chicago accent. Plutonium dragon. Plutonium dragon, yeah. Hey? One of them plutonium dragons over there. It's just it's the therapeutic dragon. to say it. If you're feeling bad, just yeah, bears. <laughs> yeah. If you're feeling bad, just go plutonium dragon. <laughs> and you can't feel bad anymore. It's like listening to the king of wishful thinking. How, you know, so 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 how many dragons are made of plutonium, do you think? Oh. I don't know if I can do Too it. many to count. I don't count. think I can do a Chicago accent outside of plutonium dragon. Too many to count. I and I don't do. know if I'm doing a Chicago one. <laughs> Yeah, no, nah, you sound more like, I don't know. Da bears. <laughs> there we go. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> well, he was born in Chicago to model Lori McLaurin and Robert Fitzgerald Williams, who was a senior executive at Ford Motor Company. Yeah, his mom's a supermodel and his dad is a senior exec. I did not realize uh, how rich he was, basically. <laughs> he had money. Like, and I know he said, he had said like he was lonely and he was mostly raised by his au pairs. Because his parents were always working her out. Well, but, he, uh, he also said that a lot of uh, his comedy came from, well, yeah, a lot was playing by himself. And yeah, he'd with, come his, up with different voices. All his toys. and. But he'd also come up with, he said his first impression was to make his mom laugh. He did an impression of his grandma. Yes. And then he was like, oh, I can do this. And then he started going more. And he, well, what he said was uh, his best friend was his own imagination. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Obviously, it makes extremely funny, talented men. He was raised Episcopalian. Catholic light. Episcopalian's pretty cool. They're a pretty progressive church. All the same praying and none of the guilt. That was what he said it was <laughs> and like. I mean, this obviously wasn't when he was growing up, but I mean, they're all for uh, same-sex marriage. They have no problems with. They, they aren't as militant on political issues. They're pretty cool, I think. Supposedly, when Robin Williams was in high school, I-, I read in a few places that he was voted least likely to succeed. But what? still the funniest. What the fuck kind of high school has that as a superlative? <laughs> it's like, remember your high school years. You're going to go nowhere. You fucking chump. Least likely. <laughs> to- no, like, here's, here, how about some encouragement sending you off? You're the least likely to succeed, <laughs> you fucking piece of shit. Go at it. You might be a janitor. But I don't get that, too, because he's been quoted as saying that, like, oh, he owned the school. Like, he was class president. He really excelled, like, loved school, loved education and everything. So how would – I don't get – I don't know. Yeah, it, that doesn't make any sense to me if you ask me. Uh, Maybe he said it one off as a joke once. It's and it possible. just got misinterpreted I mean, when, in the media. When he was a young stand-up comic, he did an interview, and he was asked where he was from. And he told the interviewer that he was Orc? from Scotland. Oh, okay. Yeah. And it told got... him that he was from Scotland. And for like a year or so, they were like, oh, yeah, Robin Williams is from Scotland. And he's just, and he's just like, uh, no, I'm not. <laughs> but he does but have he some said Scottish, it in the Scottish accent. Yes. <laughs> we can't do that. So, yeah, he, he uh, went to Juilliard, right? Yeah, with Christopher Reeve, Superman himself. They became pretty good friends, actually. There's this touching story. It's, it's a, Pretty crazy. Oh, no. You're not going to talk about the time when Christopher Reeve uh, and Robin Williams got drunk at a bar one night during college. And, <laughs> Are no. you spreading libel about them? Well, 
No, if anything, it would not be libel. It would be slander. Oh. Libel's written, dick. Oh, I guess that's fair. <laughs> um, <laughs> in Christopher Reeve's autobiography, uh, Still Me, he writes about right after he got in his horrible, you know, horseback riding accident. Ah, uh, yes. The tragic accident that left him a uh, crippled paraplegic. Yeah, he was in the hospital uh, shortly after that. And, well, here, rather than tell you what happened, I'll read it. Read it in his own words from his autobiography, Still Me. Then, at an especially bleak moment, the door flew open and in hurried a squat fellow with a blue scrub hat and yellow surgical gown and glasses, speaking in Russian accent. He announced that he was my proctologist and that he had to examine me immediately. It was Robin Williams. For the first time since the accident, I laughed. My old friend had helped me know that somehow I was going to be okay. He tended to do that a lot. I mean... That's great that he was able to do that with Christopher Reeve, but he also would go to a lot of the children's cancer centers and like uh, pediatric wards as Patch Adams, one of his yeah. characters. And Patch Adams. Like and just, he played a Russian doctor in uh, nine months. He did. Yeah. That is correct. <laughs> you are one of the 14 people that saw that movie. <laughs> but he actually, as far as like these acts of just like compassion and altruism, like he, I mean, my roommate was watching a video. It was Conan O'Brien's tribute. It was on YouTube. I did see that. I and saw he that. He was talking about, about how Conan O'Brien made an offhand comment about how he wanted to ride a bike. And Robin Williams delivered him the most ridiculous looking bicycle that was like orange and green with shamrocks <laughs> all over it. And yeah. he called him up and he's, he's like, thanks. And he's like, yeah, are you going to ride it? And he's like, well, of course I am. I'm really excited. And he's like, are you going to look like an idiot riding it? <laughs> he's like, yeah, probably. And he's like, that's awesome. <laughs> uh, he absolutely loves cycling. His uh, love for riding a bike, which, fuck, I do too. Like, I you love cycling? Everywhere. Yeah, I can really relate to that. I love riding my bike. I love cycling and magic. <laughs> <laughs> um his love for bicycling really uh, s- started basically in like the late seventies and you know the, throughout the eighties. He had on and off problems with mostly cocaine and alcohol. Oh yes, um, when he went through treatment, I think. Well, he only really had like one problem with cocaine, and then he was like, "Fuck that, never again." Yeah. Like, um, he he had commented on that, and he's like, "No, I, I did." Keep falling off the wagon with alcohol, but I've never went back to cocaine. That that was yeah. I have no desire to go through that again. And uh, uh, when his good friend John Belushi died, uh, right around the same time, Robin Williams had his first son Zach. It was kind of his big wake yeah. up call that he had to stop and do something about it. And he turned to cycling to treat his depression and combat his addiction. That's that's good. Everybody needs uh, a new focus right. when when they're trying to battle an addiction or. Or anything, really. Like, if they're trying to steer away from something, they do something else to get their mind off of it. Man, bike riding feels real good, too. I love it. Lots of endorphins released. It's funny you said that his first child was the reason that he stopped using and started focusing on other things. Uh, He did have two other children after that. And being the gamer that he is, the big gamer nerd that he is. Robin Williams loved video games. He loved video games. He named his uh, first daughter Zelda. Well, only daughter. And who... That was after, what, a Mario character or something? No. 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 <laughs> I kid. No, I think it was after uh, Ganondorf's niece. No, no. Princess Zelda. Princess and, Zelda uh, from The Legend of Zelda, of course. Yes, and the other son that he had, he named Cody, from, supposedly from Final Fight. Yeah, the main character and from Final Fight. Street Fighter 4. He's in, fin- he's in Street Fighter yes. 4? Really? Cody is, yep. Oh, Crossover universe that they take place in the same well, universe too. Is I mean it, it was which Ryu appears in Marvel versus Capcom. Everything's Marvel canon. Robin Williams <laughs> yeah. is Marvel canon. Uh, ra- wait, <laughs> <laughs> that's like a jumped like once two times removed degree to it. Uh, but yeah, the re- final fight is uh, was technically the first Street Fighter. Street Fighter Two fighting game was based off of Final Fight as a sequel to it. Oh, now you feel stupid because I know you knew that. The more you know, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I was probably, you know, what I was thinking of, King of Fighters. I think probably or a Virtua Fighter. I was like mixing all those games together. Yeah. Um, well, he is. He so he was a huge, huge gamer. Uh, later in his life, he was he, a, he was a huge WoW gamer. He yeah. loved World of Warcraft. Also an avid player of Call of Duty. 
Yep. Uh, I think it's crazy to think that like there's people out there. A lot of them probably don't even know it, but that they they had like, played with them. They've headshotted Robin Williams, or they've <laughs> yeah. they've went on a raid with Robin Williams and yeah, didn't for real. even know. That's it. awesome. Because I'm sure every time he got on, he wasn't like, "Hey, I'm Robin Williams. Everyone pay attention to me." Yeah, he probably like, wasn't. He, sometimes he just wanted to play the game and have fun. And he was probably lonely orc girl. <laughs> uh, he went door and he's like, "Hello." <laughs> he's just doing all those voices. <laughs> Hello. He's got a voice for each character he plays. Just it's just like M- Mrs. Doubtfire. <laughs> ah, you do a good Mrs. Doubtfire impression. Whoever bro. you are, brah. <laughs> uh, there, I don't care, brah. I don't care. You stop camping, brah. There is currently a movement among fans asking for Blizzard to create an NPC to honor Robin Williams in WoW and uh, for Nintendo to do the same in Laws. Oh, you haven't heard that Legend of Zelda. Legend of Zelda? <laughs> Laws, I like it. <laughs> you haven't heard they 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 responded and they said yes in Blizzard a future said, title. Blizzard said they're working on it, and Nintendo said in a future title he will be an NPC. Really? Because I just read that Nintendo, uh, the unless they had another response after this, the official response I read from them was like, Robin Williams is a great man. It's a horrible loss. Blah blah. We. We respect his support and like we we you know all all the fans outpouring of whatever, but uh, whatever that's what they said. They but didn't say whatever. whatever. But they were like, but they were like at this uh, at this difficult time, we will not be discussing uh, future game possibilities or something like oh, that. Oh no, no, absolutely not. I read that is what they said. But they, I know, they but must they have, re-released the statement. They must have been like, dude, what saying the fuck? that he is going to be in an upcoming. Le- I think it was after. Blizzard finally said yes, and they're like, hmm, well, may, that'd be good PR. The spokesperson sure. got fired. What the fuck, man? Why did you say no? <laughs> Why did you, you say, dick? we're going to keep it under wraps Robin's for now? Robin's a good name for a Legend of Zelda character in the first place. Get the fuck out for of real. here. You're fired. Yeah, he's not going to be anything big. I, my guess is he'll probably be like a merchant or something. I would love, I can see, I would love if there was another character, like maybe similar to Link. Like, not Link, not a Link clone, but like... There's yeah, they, really... they already did that in Legend of Zelda 2, Link's Adventure. Yeah. What do you mean? Uh, Shadow Link. The no, not boss. like that. Not like that. I mean, like, another adventurer or something. Maybe another Kikori or... I don't know. Like, they, uh, it, it'd be cool. and uh, Name him Robin. Like, I don't know. That'd be yeah, cool. Yeah, I think they're just going for NPCs right now. Zelda doesn't have a whole lot of supporting characters. Why not get a, get a cool... Yeah, an NPC maybe. Maybe not an NPC, I don't know, but why not give it give him some depth, not just have it be some random guy standing in a house that you ransack. <laughs> oh yeah, well I I I I get the feeling like it'd be cool if they like made him one of the merchants and you know what happens when Nintendo says they're gonna put you in a Zelda game? You get killed, Chris Houlihan. Ah, uh, <laughs> this doesn't happen. <laughs> no, you, you get a secret room written in there, which is where we get our name, and uh, and it's it's hidden in the code. It's not even accessible. Like you have to like perform fucking backflips practically to get there. Yeah, you have to do things that you shouldn't be able to do in the game yet at all. Run at top ever. speed. But anyway, uh yeah, Robin Williams. Robin, the fucking World of Warcraft character, the Legend of Zelda character. Make it happen. Make it so. <laughs> it is decided. One thing that was really cool and really big to me was uh he performed Blame Canada at the Academy Awards. Oh, uh, yes, yes. And this was right around when... Now, see, growing up, Robin Williams was a huge part of my childhood. We'd go see Jumanji and Jack. Like, Robin Williams and Jim Carrey were, like, two of the comedians that my whole family, like, all... I have four brothers and sisters. Right. You know, two brothers, two sisters. So we would all get excited about going to see their movies, and uh, the whole family would usually go... Now, around the time that I got into South Park, I was kind of growing out of that a little bit. So it was a little surprising to me because I never – as a kid, I didn't watch Robin Williams stand up, which was a little more edgy. And Right. You know, well, he was allowed to use rated R material. Yeah. So, so. I, I wasn't – I was like, why would Robin Williams – I just knew him as the guy from Miss Doubtfire and shit. I'm like, I just why know he... him as the genie. You know, He's the funny, yeah. fun, happy, 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 <laughs> kid-friendly – but that was awesome. It is kind of bittersweet because the whole reason that he did, because as a kid I was wondering why. Well, Mary Kay Bergman, who did all the voices for pretty much all the females in South Park in the first couple seasons, right. killed herself very shortly after the movie was made. And, uh, yeah, it's sad. Terrible. And that's why 
Robin Williams came up and sang the song. Yeah. Frowny face, but smiley face. Frowny face, emoticon, smiley face with... Tear. Tear. <laughs> smiley face <laughs> with tear emoticon. Interesting. That's this episode in a nutshell. Yeah. You could credit him for creating his own swear word that people use still. Shazbot? Shazbot. From Mork and Mindy, right? Mork and fucking Mindy, man. Did you know Mork and Mindy was uh, originally, it's a Happy Days spinoff. Yes. Well, I didn't up until about a week ago. <laughs> Mork showed up in an episode of Happy Days, and it's awesome. You can see him. like He's trying to figure out why men date women. Uh, on Earth. <laughs> and like he's asking the Fonz about it, and the Fonz is like, "Really?" <laughs> like he's, he's like, like, "Hey, what are you talking about?" He's like, "Don't I... men don't date women on your planet?" And he's like, "Well, it's kind of hard to tell. The parts are interchangeable." <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, it's it's yeah, Mork was a fucking Happy Days character, and it's crazy because Mork and Mindy took place in, in what the, the early eighties, late seventies, yeah, whenever the Happy show Days was the fifties. So, so he made two trips. I guess so. To Earth. Uh, he actually, did you hear about how he got the gig as Mork? He, how? He went into audition. The guy asked him to read his lines and take a seat. And he sat down on his head and read his lines, you know, sitting on his head. And it was said that he was given the gig because he was the only actual alien to audition. So, yeah, he is a true character actor. That, like, that's the definition of character actor. A true and, character who and, was an actor. He's not a character actor. He's a character that is an actor. <laughs> right. That happens to be an actor. The best improv comedian. He set the bar for everybody. And I think that's why a lot of people hate improv because nobody can do Robin Williams. But we could do it as good as him. So, right. You know he's played four U.S. presidents? Um, or are you counting four. Aladdin? No. Okay. Not kind of, Aladdin he was does, not a U.S. president, well, no. and Robin Williams didn't play Aladdin. I mean, Genie <laughs> might have done an impersonation of the president. Nope. Not counting impersonations. Okay. Only, or like only in Good Morning in Vietnam full, when he did Richard Nixon. In full costume, live okay. action, on film. I'm not even counting if he did a voice. Obviously, one is Man of the Year. Oh, I wasn't thinking of that. Okay, five U.S. presidents, but four what? real U.S. presidents. Uh, and other was Teddy Roosevelt in Night of the Museum. Yes. Wow, I didn't even think of Man of the Year because that was a fictional president. But yeah, no, he's played four real oh, U.S. presidents. Oh, real That's U.S. Nuts, presidents. Dude, like, so yeah, um, so Teddy, Teddy Roosevelt. So I got Teddy Roosevelt off Night the... Of the museum, which was awesome. That was a really cool... Uh, the movie was I hated so, the movie. So, I really didn't like the movie at all, but Teddy I Roosevelt was a great character. I expected to hate it. I don't like Ben Stiller. Me um, neither. But, uh, Sorry about Sometimes him. he's cool, but most of the time I really yeah. don't like him. I, he didn't bother me in Night at the Museum. I, I kind of enjoyed it. It was a good family movie. To me, Night at the Museum did kind of harken back to like the Jumanji type family movies. There aren't a lot of those. It's funny because there's a lot of crappy movies that Robin Williams was in that he's the reason why there's anything good to say about the movie. And he was in a my great. Eyes, at least. He was a great Teddy Roosevelt. Yeah. Yes, he was. A, he did do Teddy Roosevelt well. He did him justice. Uh, so, so you got one. Oh, I'm supposed to. Lyndon Johnson. No. Did oh, he do? You, so you don't know what the other ones are. You're just guessing at um, this point. Yeah, Nixon. No. No. Uh, I mean Bush. No. No, really. Uh, Bill Clinton. No. Uh, uh, George Washington? Yes. He played George Washington in a Dodge Challenger commercial. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that was, that was it's great, oh, though. I'm George Washington. I can't ever tell a lie. I chop down cherry trees. Oh. He doesn't speak, but like oh. it starts off with like... Um, he was just the, getting money for a British gig, wasn't he? Like, going to charge forward, and then... Uh, they're like on their horses, and the guy leads them, and they start charging. Then you see a, a car start driving <laughs> out towards them, and and all these other people on horses, and a few other cars, and like all the American troops, and George Washington's driving the car, and he looks oh great God. as George Washington That's in crazy. the George Washington makeup and costume. Like it looks awesome. If only you could have heard him talk. But James Garfield. No. Ah, oh, damn it. Now I'm just like, wow. That's. You got two more. Come on, man. You can guess. You can guess. You might not. Uh, Lincoln? No. I didn't think Lincoln. <laughs> He's not tall enough yeah, for Lincoln. Rob Williams. <laughs> he does have a hell of a Lincoln. beard, though. <laughs> well, Ken have a hell of a beard. Uh, Barack Obama was one. No, I'm just kidding. He didn't play Barack Obama. <laughs> That's not fair. Well, I also don't think it's fair to use... Oh, man. That, that was him just like, we'll give what, you... What, to use the commercial? 5,000... Well, I mean, it is fair to use the commercial, but like, ah, oh, count that as a, being a president. 
It was. He um, played George true. Washington live action in full costume and makeup and was well, clearly it could be half character. costume. <laughs> <laughs> you did see below the waist. I did. At the end of the commercial, he was outside of the car. Oh, damn it. I didn't see the commercial, okay? Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know. Truman? No. You want me to just tell you? Ronald Reagan. No, you already guessed. Oh, no, you didn't. You didn't guess Reagan. No, not Reagan. You want me to just tell you? Yeah. Uh, he played Dwight Eisenhower in Dwight 20- Eisenhower. 2012's The Butler. And he played Ulysses S. Grant in the 2003 miniseries Freedom, A History of Us, or U.S. I didn't know about the Ulysses S. Grant, but he also I can played, so picture him as, as dressing up as Ulysses S. Grant. He played both the Wright brothers in that. He played a couple other people, too, in that. He played a bunch of roles. The History Channel was like, well, we're paying for fucking Robin Williams. We're going to get our <laughs> get use our out of him. dollar out of this. <laughs> He's not just going to be the president. You're going to be the Wright brothers, too. I don't know how they coincide together, but it's going to happen. Well, did you know that there was actually a, a couple movies that he either wanted to be in or he was going to be in, but, you know, problems happen, you know? Well, uh, I know that he tried like hell to, to be the into a Batman movie. Yeah, dude, he was in the running for Joker in Batman 89, but it was if, if Nicholson didn't do it, they would have went with Robin Williams. Right. Uh, he was in the running for the Riddler in Batman Forever. He was, but that was before Tim Burton was separated from the project. Right, and uh, uh, Joel Schumacher came on, and he wanted Jim Carrey. Oh, I want Jim Carrey. And at this point, uh, Robin Williams, even before that, Robin Williams was pretty pissed. And leading up to that, like Robin Williams was pretty pissed that they kind of used him as a pawn to get Jack Nicholson to agree to do the Joker. Like, well, we're going to get Robin Williams to do it if you don't. Oh, I see. uh, So he was kind of pissed at that, and he refused to do roles in WB movies until he was offered the role of Riddler. And then, kick Tim Burton out. Got dropped. Joel Schumacher's like, nah, fuck I want Carrie. I want want Jim Carrey. Who's this Robin Williams guy? Oh, oh yeah, no. The the genie from Aladdin? No, thank you. We'll go with Jim Carrey. He's a little edgier. After Batman Begins, he expressed interest in The Dark Knight, trying to play the Joker. Uh, He actually said, well, you want to do a different Joker. You know, if they do Arkham Asylum, it would be amazing. Arkham Asylum is one of the greatest, nastiest comic books ever. It's truly, it's like the Marquis de Sade on on that level, and wonderfully damaged and quite tragic. In terms of when you realize what happened to create these characters, uh... Which is awesome. Have you ever read Arkham Asylum? I haven't. Uh, that is one that's on my list, though, to get into. Do you into. have it? I don't. I'll let you borrow it. It's, oh, it's... you have it? I didn't realize. Yeah, I was going to. I like yeah, It was totally. going to be on my list to buy as a graphic novel. Yeah, I'll let you borrow that shit. Uh, fans were rumoring him to play Hugo Strange for a while. And Ooh. that never happened. I could so see him as Hugo Strange. Are you kidding me? That would have been perfect. There's some fucked up, like, bullshit fan-made trailers on the internet. You know, where they take yeah. clips from other movies and right. shit. Use him in Flubber. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, When Dark Knight Rises was announced, he did an interview in Empire Magazine where he said, years ago they offered me the Joker and then gave it to Jack Nicholson. Then they offered me the Riddler and gave it to Jim Carrey. I'd be like, okay, is this a real offer? If it is, then the answer is yes. Don't pump me again, motherfuckers. Uh... And then he said, I'm using this article as an ad. Chris. Chris Nolan. Chris Nolan. Call me. I'll do anything. I could be a great character or just some weird little man in the background in Arkham Asylum. Like, he really wanted to be in these fucking Just be in a Batman movies. movie. Damn he it. Like, Let him be. Seriously. God damn it. Uh, that would have been so awesome if Robin Williams was something. Right, that's Make cr- him a fucking Mr. Freeze instead of Arnold Schwarzenegger. Right? Oh, yeah. He can do the accent too. Oh, fuck. I forgot. For a second, I was actually like, yeah, do it. He can do the accent. It'll be oh, great. No, no. And then the realization hit me again that, yeah, that can't happen. Um, other movies he almost was a part in. You remember What About Bob? Yes. No yeah, way. Bill Murray's part in What About Bob. He was actually slated. He had the part, but he was already in The Fisher King. Yeah, with Jeff Bridges. But uh, he was already filming that, so he couldn't do What About Bob. And so they settled for... Bill Murray. Well, see, that's one instance where I do have to say I'm glad that Bill Murray was in that role because I that role is one of my favorite Bill Murray movies. You know, really? it's definitively. I don't know if it's one of well, Bill Murray's in. But I Ghostbusters. Grew up with, Ghostbusters. Yeah, I grew up with Ghostbusters, and then was like, oh, cool, that's the guy from Ghostbusters, and like that's one of the movies I watched as a kid. You know, like 
Yeah. So that's I can't separate that. That's like if you said Bill Murray was going to be missed out fire. I'd be like, well, I'm glad that didn't happen. As much as I love Bill Murray, fair I point. grew up with missed out fire. That's being... a fair point. <laughs> Rob Williams. So, but yeah, it would be interesting to see. I did don't you get know me that... wrong though, man. Don't get me wrong. I I love what about Bob and I love Bill Murray's performance in it. But I think it would have been cool to see. I can see Robin Williams doing that. Well, speaking of Bill Murray and Robin Williams and roles Robin Williams didn't get, did you know <laughs> that Robin Williams was almost one of the three amigos? No uh, way. Steven Spielberg was briefly attached to the project. I could see that too, though. And he wanted Steve Martin, Bill Murray, and Robin Williams. Um, originally, the lineup was going to be Steve Martin, Dan Aykroyd, and John Belushi. Of course, what we got was Steve Martin, Chevy Chase, and Martin Short. <laughs> um, I would have loved John Belushi in that. Right. With Robin Williams and Steve Martin. Could you imagine if it was a Steven Spielberg movie starring Steve Martin, Bill Murray, and Robin Williams? That what if movie it would was... probably be a fucking classic, dude. Like That movie would probably be way well, more classic cla- than it like, already yeah, is. True. Fair enough. Okay. Uh, what if it was Steve Martin, Chevy Chase, and Dan Aykroyd? That'd be pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> You're just like, fuck Martin Short. No. No, Martin Short's cool. I like Martin Short. He's pretty Short. cool. He's funny. He, I like was, Jiminy Glick. I liked him in uh, Mars Attacks. <laughs> Mars Attacks was great. Uh, you know how he is the type of actor that can play any role just about? He's so versatile, too, with his characters. Absolutely. Uh, he was originally considered for the role of Joe Miller in Philadelphia. Yeah, the one that Denzel Washington played. Oh, really? I've never seen Philadelphia. No, I actually watched it in school. In That's high interesting, school. though. Denzel Washington was the lawyer in that. Okay. To be like the counselor almost. Okay. To Tom Hanks. Interesting. Kevin Bacon. I would know more if I had seen the movie, but I, I don't. So, interesting. Stroke my chin. Chin stroking. You don't he's, say. He's got to say that he's stroking his chin because you cannot see him doing it. <laughs> Proverbially, he's stroking his chin. Pondering. He was also a big fan of anime, believe it or not. Uh, I think I read that somewhere. It was interesting. He loved Cowboy Bebop. He loved Ghost in the Shell. Who doesn't? Um, Akira, uh, Blood the Last Vampire. Yep, that's my favorite too. Yeah, he was a big yeah. anime fan. Yeah, uh, me too. <laughs> you're not a big anime I fan. I am not. <laughs> I finally caved in and watched the Pokemon series, which that's is terrible. Not, Just terrible. That's not anime. <laughs> <laughs> but it has the same animation style as a lot of it. It is anime, but it I'm is. saying but that's it's not. not it's anime. not good, yeah. That's like, oh yeah, I love reggae. I listen to UB40. <laughs> like, like, come on, man. I love reggae. Right. I, I listen, listen to, to Snow. Snow. <laughs> In four marks. And I'm going to go blam. Leaky boo boo bam. <laughs> I lick your boom boom down. Oh, yeah. He's going to lick your boom boom down. <laughs> but, yeah. I concede. I don't really like anime. I've liked a few, like, few random movies based off of video games. No, there's good anime. That and there's were, bad. Anime. It's a whole culture's. Yeah, fucking, I know. That's like saying you, you like animation, so I'm, I guarantee there's anime that you'd like. There is. There's not, there is out there. I just haven't given it the fair shake. Yeah, it's not all what you've been exposed. I've to. seen I've seen ones that I didn't like, and I steered away from it. In general, watch some Hayao probably. Miyazaki. You watched uh, Howl's Moving Castle, right? I did. did you Actually, like that? I, I love that movie. Yeah, that's anime, right? Yeah. Have you seen yeah. anything else by him? Have you seen like Spirited Away? Nope. Watch I Spirited I have away. it. It's one of those, I have it, but I haven't seen it yet. That's my favorite of of the Hayao Miyazaki movies. You know, I was uh, just thinking about what we had talked about earlier in high school. He was voted least likely to succeed. (laughs) Earlier in high school? (laughs) We didn't know each other in high high school. school. In Robin Williams High School. We didn't go to Robin Williams High School. Yeah, we didn't go to Robin Williams High School either. (laughs) No. What about Robin Williams in high school? He was voted least likely to succeed. Kind of bullshit is Bullshit. Well, Fuck all of you editors of that yearbook, because in 1997, he was voted the funniest fucking man alive. Nice. Eat that. I'm sure he's like, looking at it, he's like, yeah, <laughs> I was the fucking genie in Aladdin. I was Mrs. Doubtfire. I was jumanji all over your shit, man. <laughs> that jumanji <laughs> all over your shit. <laughs> so Robin Williams has been nominated for and won tons of awards, and justifiably so. Justifiably so. Uh... Craig, yes, what sir? are what are a few awards that he has won? Uh, <laughs> good question, Nathan. It's it's a shame I didn't come prepared. But just off the top of your head, uh, uh, Oscars wise, 
he won the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor for Goodwill Hunting in 1997. Oh, God. Go back to my brain. Go back to Wait, my brain. Wait, is the brain. Academy Award an Oscar? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yes, it is. The Academy Awards are the Oscars. I thought they were two different things. No, okay. they're the same thing. Uh, he won a few Golden Globe Awards. In 91, he won Best Actor for The Fisher King. Uh, in 93, he won Special Award for Vocal Work in Aladdin. And also in 93, he won Best Actor in a Musical or Comedy for Mrs. Doubtfire. He even won a Grammy, too, didn't he? Yeah, he won a Grammy for his 1979 live performance, Reality. What a concept. That was uh, spoken word poetry, right? Or some shit? No, it was uh, stand-up. It was a stand-up? Spoken yeah. word stand-up. <laughs> Robin Williams' spoken word? That would be amazing. Oh my well, god! Well, it was a Grammy. So good. You know, I was thinking it had something it to do with it. Was for recorded the recording of it. Fair enough. Not just for the actual event, stand up, but event. for the recording of it. Okay, I see it. Yeah, I'm gonna be jumping around in years here because I'm more. I got them from um, categorized, categorized, by like, categorized by the type of award it is in your brain, right? Yes. <laughs> In my brain, which reminds me of 1994 when he he won the People's Choice Award for Favorite Comedy Motion Picture Actor. <laughs> just off the top of your head, what movie was that for? Oh, God, I can't remember. <laughs> I just I remember just, the category I remember it that he won. I assume it was Mrs. Doubtfire. Okay. Because <laughs> he won it the year after. Yeah, sure. Let's go with that. He did like a bunch of... <clears throat> dude, like 92, he was in like four movies in yeah, 1992 or was, something. He was, he was crazy. Um, he won MTV Movie Awards. That used to mean something. <laughs> did it, Craig? Did it? Well, when I was a tween, it did. Yeah, I know. It did. <laughs> uh, in 93 and 94, he won not only Best Comedic Performance, but Best Male Performance in Mrs. Doubtfire. And he also won Comedic Performance for Aladdin. Movie Awards! It's a golden popcorn. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Fuck you, Movie Awards. <laughs> Blockbuster, you remember that company? Vaguely? Yeah, they, they did like was, movie rentals. Uh, they were like a grocery store, right? No, I think they did movie rentals. I think it became haunted. Yeah, it was a grocery or store. Hainted. That did mo- no, it wasn't a Blockbuster. No, you're thinking of Price Chopper? Yes. Yes. No, Blockbuster was like Price Chopper, but without the groceries. I don't understand. Movie rentals? VHS rentals. Why would you have a movie on a piece of, on a physical object? I don't understand. That doesn't make sense. Uh, I feel like you should because it's kind of your childhood. <laughs> you don't remember it. You aren't that generation, Nathan. <laughs> uh, anyways, he won. You mean like a video game? Movies used to be like video games? You'd yeah, have to like kind have of. have a thing to put but in. They were like old <laughs> video games where they were still on cartridges. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah. That was right. Um, I didn't better than being video- on 8mm. I didn't know old video games were on cartridges. <laughs> he didn't have a Super Nintendo, a SNES. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, Blockbuster had their own entertainment awards. I assume it's that same Blockbuster. He won favorite actor in a family movie for Flubber in 1998. Yes, Flubber actually won something <laughs> because of Robin Williams. Flubber wasn't that great, but I kind of liked it as a kid. I didn't even like it as a kid, honestly. It was a little disappointing, but it was... It was one movie I was like, nope. Robin I'm... Williams, it was actually one of the first times I realized that you could be disappointed with a movie as a kid. Uh, we all went to see Jack, because like I said, we'd all go to see Robin Williams movies. Oh my God, you were disappointed with Jack, weren't you? Well, I was really excited to see it, and I saw it, and afterwards I remember like... The movie My mom made me sad. saying that she didn't like it. And I was like, you didn't like it? And she was like, no, it was depressing. It was depressing. And I was like, yeah, it was. I wasn't, that's not what I was expecting to see in this, like some dark like drama about this 10-year-old kid that's going to die. It's weird, yeah. And, uh, but I, I loved that movie when I was a kid. I did. I think that opened up my eyes, though, to like, oh, but I don't make have to like every movie that I see. I don't, just because Robin Williams is in it and he was funny – doesn't mean I'm just like, yeah, that was great. It was a good movie. Right. Like, some movies aren't good because people make them. I wasn't there yet, apparently. No. <laughs> that was, like, one of the realizations. Yeah. Like, wow, people I wasn't can make there mistakes. yet because I was still like, 
ah, oh, Robin Williams is funny in this, and then I'm sad. I love this movie. <laughs> I didn't hate it. I and wasn't then, like, and fuck then, this like, movie. Yeah. It's, a, it's a shitload of fuck, mom. <laughs> it's a shitload of fuck. Nice, nice phrasage there. Oh, yeah, but looking back at Jack, I, I mean, when I got older, I realized it wasn't a good movie. You know, I watched it, but I was still laughed at Robin Williams parts. And that was one of the movies that his performance made me, is still great. Yeah. yeah, that made me realize you can not like a movie, but like parts of a movie. Yeah, totally. Absolutely. Because his performance as a 10 year old kid is awesome. Who else can fucking do that besides Jim Carrey or Adam Sandler? But that's just because Adam well, Sandler wasn't acting. He just is a 10 year old. kid. Yeah, for so. real. Well, I mean, now he's like <laughs> now he's like a 25 year old kid. <laughs> he's yeah, he's grown up a little. <laughs> Finally putting an offer in on his first house. Thinking back, you know, Robin Williams movies, a lot of times you don't think of, uh, you just think of the comedies that he did. He did a lot of dramas. Uh, yes. One Hour Photo, have you ever seen that one? Yes, I have. That movie is... Creepy yeah. and touching. It has, a com- like, it has a sympathetic main character that's also unnerving and creepy. Yeah, like, like you almost feel bad for him, but he's a fucking creep, you know? That that I mean, it's not the best movie ever, but I that was one of the roles that opened my mind. Like, again, I can't believe I'm still making comparisons with him and Jim Carrey because, like, the same thing happened with Jim Carrey yeah, when, when he, he did a dramatic doing, role. Uh, a little on the different and side. Andy Kaufman and the uh, well, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind Eternal was Sunshine. was the one that like clued me in how good of an actor Jim Carrey was. But One Hour Photo was one of the ones, not necessarily a great movie, but. Oh my God! This comedic actor can be so creepy and dark and depressing. And well, I always Dead Poets Society. Dead Poets Society. I thought that movie came out way later than it did. When I was younger, and like I thought it came out like right before Goodwill Hunting. Oh, the movie okay. came out in yeah, 1989, no. dude. Yeah, it was the 80s. Like when I was young, I was like, "Oh, cool! Robin Williams is doing uh, serious roles now." And I thought Dead Poets Society was like a new one. I remember seeing it when I was in <laughs> high school and thinking it came out like a couple of years ago or something. Wow. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> That's crazy. Because it looks so 80s watching it. I never picked up on that. They're all in a, in a, like a prep school, so they all yeah. dress the same. And like, they're all talking like prep school students. It didn't like You know what's weird to me with me? What, um, what gives me clues when watching things is like the look of the camera. Right, like the shots, I the way the shots are done, the way like almost like the type of grain that it's in. Like '80s movies have a certain grain, and I could, I picked up on that. Right. I probably saw it on TV and was just like, "Oh, it's on TNN." Right, <laughs> that's why. It looks that's like why this. <laughs> it's on TNN. <laughs> Fuck you, Nashville Network. Uh, do you remember Toys? Of course you remember. Yeah, Toys. of course. That wasn't um, one of the movies that uh, also. In Insomnia, did you ever see that movie with Al Pacino? I still have not seen it. Wow, wait. that's something to check wait, out. Wait, yeah, that's the one that's in Alaska, Alaska, right? Yes, I have seen it. I have. Al Pacino's having trouble sleeping; he can't yes. really concentrate. And we that actually why... watched that in my cinema film class in oh, high school. Interesting. Yeah, that way, uh, Robin it's... Williams was able to basically be a serial killer in front of him without him yes. realizing. It. And it's <laughs> based so on sleep a, depraved. It's based on a book of a different name, right? Yes. I don't know the name of the book. Yeah, don't I don't ask remember me. the name. Don't ask me. It's not going to happen. You're not getting it from me. Google it, guys. We can't do everything for you. <laughs> that was Chris Nolan, right? It was. Holy shit. All the way back then. I didn't even really realize that. Boom. I was just thinking it about was. that. Um, yeah, Christopher Nolan goes way back, even with Memento. That was the first yeah, mindfuck always, movie I remember from him. I always forget that. Do you remember Toys? I do. Yeah. Of course. Of course sure. you remember Toys. Everybody remembers Toys. Uh, but back to Robin Williams, I just I love toys. I miss playing. We had two episodes about them. Yeah, I was just wondering if you remembered like toys. How oh, okay, to okay. I thought you were, see see that was a misdirect because um, I thought you were talking about the movie and was, in general was, you were referring to earlier dude, podcasts of us wavelength because yeah. I was just about to ask if you remember the Robin Williams movie. Toys. Wow, crazy! Uh, totally unrelated. Note. Wow, holy shit! We we are meant <laughs> to be podcast partners. Um, yeah, Robin Williams movie Toys. Who would have thought know, we would bring that up? Did you know there was a Toys video game for Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis? I know it existed. I remember seeing it, but I never played it. Like I remember seeing it at the uh, at like you know where you go to rent a Blockbuster or a Price Chopper, <laughs> and I would see it and I would skip over and not rent it. Like 
at that point. I was <laughs> like, there's certain movie-based title games uh, that I just know aren't going to be good. <laughs> I'm not going to waste my weekend rental on that. No, I'm going to get Zombies Ate My Neighbors again. Uh, I think probably the first Robin Williams movie I ever saw. I've been trying to figure that out. Because really? I, know, I know when I saw Aladdin that I knew Robin Williams was the genie. So yes. I'm, I'm trying to figure out what was the first movie. Well, How that was 92, was. right? Aladdin yes. was 92. I think Hook. Hook came after, didn't it? Oh, well, it doesn't matter You're if you. Right. No, we Hook came out the same exact year. It did, didn't it? You're... I knew Robin Williams mm. from Hook. When I was watching Hook, I knew that was the guy that was genie. Hmm. So This is so tough, man. It's so weird because we are so young. To me, it seems like Hook was out way before Aladdin, but you're right. Same year. I don't know, but Hook. Hook. What a fucking movie. Yeah, for real. I, I, I'm kind of interested still in hearing about uh, what was the first Robin Williams movie. I don't know. Yeah. Because I know I knew. Well, let, let's, go, let's go to the internet for this one because maybe something can spark my memory if we IMDb something. Or maybe it'll get wrong. I don't know. Well, you want to go through his movie credits? Not necessarily. I know Good Morning Vietnam and Dead Poets Society were the first Robin Williams movies I've seen, even though they're earlier than these what? other movies. You saw Good Morning no, Vietnam? No, I'm saying I know they, they weren't. Oh, okay. They weren't. Like, I, I didn't watch either of those to like more recently because I always let it slide. Mork and Mindy? Popeye? It's possible Popeye might have been. But see, I remember being a kid... And I remember my older brother telling me that Robin Williams played Popeye and me being like, no, he didn't. Shut up. And yeah, he's like, yeah, he me. did. And I was like, no, he didn't. And he was like, yeah, he did. Dad, didn't Robin Williams play Popeye? And he's like, yep. I'm like, what? <laughs> yup. It happened. <laughs> the internet didn't exist, so we couldn't just go on Google. Oh, right, if, you if we could, it would have ended so many arguments between me and my brother. <laughs> Um, actually, I'd like to correct you about Hook. That came out the year before Aladdin, 91. Oh. Which is interesting. Oh. He had a lot of movies out in oh. 91. Oh. You don't say. So, yeah, but I do believe Aladdin might have been the first one, first Robin Williams movie that I ever saw. It was either Aladdin or Popeye. It's possible because I used to love Popeye, so my family could have easily shown that to me in, like, 1989, you know? Yeah. Aladdin was fucking amazing, though. That was a cultural phenomenon. I remember when that movie came out. Oh, my God. My best friend as a little fucking seven-year-old, I was, he's like, I saw it. And I'm like, no, you didn't. He's like, yeah, I did. My mom <laughs> took me to see it. I saw it in theaters. And I'm like, oh, so jealous. Oh. That, was, uh, uh, that was definitely one of the VHS movies that I watched and rewatched and rewatched yep, and rewatched and rewatched. And yep. you remember like the big... Huge, di- like you know how there were VHS cases, and then there were Disney VHS yep, the cases, big the big plastic ones. ones. Yeah, like uh just the fe- forget about it. That and the Lion King were were there. It was right there. And, the two uh, of them. Those are those are the magnum opus. I remember I think, when I found out about Disney. the subliminal messages? My oh, music my teacher God. in middle school actually told us about the subliminal messages no way. and showed us. Yeah, and Jeannie straight up says, "Little kids, take off your clothes." Did they get Robin Williams to say that, or did somebody else say that? I don't know, because also <laughs> no, there was a uh, Aladdin said all good, all oh, good yeah, girls no, it wasn't, take it, off their clothes. You're right, it wasn't the genie, it was Aladdin. Thank God. Robin Williams wouldn't do that. Woo, uh, Steve from Full House, he might. Faith in humanity restored, <laughs> right? Because <laughs> it was you were seeing. The reason I'm confused is because the camera was focused on the genie. It cut away from yeah. Aladdin, and Genie was talking to the carpet. So that's why you were distracted and weren't hearing it unless somebody pointed it out to you. Then he was in Fern Gully, which came out actually the same year as Aladdin, which I thought it must have come out later. It could but, have, right? No, no. Fern Gully was way later. Nope. nope same year nope, as Aladdin. Same year. And much inferior to Aladdin. Um, I mean, he there was like in the early 90s, he was in at least like four movies a year. It was ridiculous. Ridiculous. I'm, I don't even, I don't, I'm not even going to get into it. It's so ridiculous. Mrs. Doubtfire, as I said, was a fucking event for my family. We were like, yes. oh, this is going to be hilarious. Robin Williams is an old lady, and this is going to be real. great. Yeah. That movie had you know a what? heart, too. It did. And uh, fuck you, Tyler Perry, for trying to like take that. You were no Mrs. Doubtfire, <laughs> Medea. The way that they, they tackled divorce, though, 
like and yes. families separating and stuff like that was great, especially for that time period and everything. And I don't think I thought about that as a kid, but you know, my parents are separated and right. uh, like that was probably as a kid that probably meant something to me without realizing uh, it, that there's kids in the movies that go through the same yeah, thing. I know, you know as, as a kid, I remember uh, watching that movie and seeing the divorce and like, I was sad. Like, unfortunately my family is still together and <laughs> I'm kidding. Unfortunately. I, super, I'm super fortunate that my parents uh, never split. Well, I'm super they fortunate still love each that other. my parents split, but they're all best friends. Right. My mom, my stepdad, my dad, they're that's, great friends. That's one thing they to be along. really fortunate about. Absolutely. Um, I mean, my nephew's from a split family. It, it's, but like watching Mrs. Doubtfire and seeing, I remember the scene where he had them in his little apartment that he had to get because he got kicked yeah. out. They were eating dinner, and like I remember thinking, "Oh my God, that would be so sad if my dad had to move." Like, and I would oh have to go and see him on you know on certain days. Like I'm thinking, like how lucky am I that you know I don't have to deal with that? Yeah, it it, it is. It, it, I think it was pretty cool. I thought that was a good. There's not a lot. Of family movies that come out, I think, like that now. I did think that, that the like mom was a bitch in that movie, though. Just totally. Saying. Totally. <laughs> Just putting that out there. Did you see the – there's a recut of the – there's a trailer on YouTube to make Miss Doubtfire look like a horror movie? <laughs> It is amazing. It. Like played in the psycho sense? Dude, we're watching it after this podcast. Okay. It's so great. That Fair and enough. Mary Poppins are the two best ones I've seen where they recut them to look like I a horror movie. I think I've seen uh, Mary Poppins one. The Missed Out Fire one is great. Is that one of those like trailers? Like it just shows the trailer to the to the movie, and they kind of just like recut it like that. No, or... they cut their own trailer from oh, scenes okay. from the they movie. They make their own to make it a horror movie. That is both crazy and awesome. Uh, so go ahead and Google Mrs. Doubtfire horror movie. We're gonna check it out. You should check it out too. So then came the next big family kids movie about Robin Williams, Jumanji. Right? Everybody was affected by that. Oh, my God, dude. Jumanji. I wanted the real board game. I did. Me, too. I, <laughs> I, I wanted to live in that world. I wanted to see that happen. Well, you know they made a board game, and I asked for it for Christmas. I wanted yeah, I didn't want that board it. game. I didn't want that board game because I knew it wasn't real. No, yeah, it was a little lame. But I got it for Christmas, and, okay, here's how my family did things on Christmas. Like, my parents would get us some presents, and they'd be wrapped. You want to smoke, Johnny? Here's a cotton. Smoke up. No, no, that's not it at all. <laughs> a real bad a day in the Benda family. My parents would, uh, like, all our presents from our parents would be wrapped under the tree. Um, our stockings would have stuff in it. And yes. the Santa present would just be out in the living room, oh, okay. unwrapped for us to see. That's the present from Santa. Oh, and, so you uh, did it like Santa only brought one of the gifts? Yes. And oh, okay. That's so we not could how my go, family did it. <laughs> we could go wake up our parents because we'd get up way earlier than our parents wanted to. And they're like, oh, I need a, I need, I need a half hour. Five, five, really five more minutes. minutes. Five more minutes. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. And then we could go downstairs and we could look at our stockings and we could look at the presents Santa brought us. But obviously we couldn't open any presents. Right. So you didn't have like um, – my family had like a sheet blocking, blocking the, the downstairs from – like they would have a whole blanket set up oh, yeah, on no. the stairs set up so like we wouldn't we weren't allowed to go down until grandma and grandpa got there. Oh wow. Right. No. Like we weren't allowed to see any of it, you know. Um and we once in a while we didn't have Santa presents like that, but we would have like a big hidden present Okay. where we might my mom might make like like a scavenger hunt to try to find it. Okay. But well, yeah, go ahead. Your that, story. I'm sorry. No, that's that's fine, dude. That year we I got the Jumanji board game. And we're waiting for our parents to get up. And I'm like, Peg, my little sister Peggy, uh, four years younger than me. I'm like, come on, let's play, let's play. And she was scared to play because she didn't want rhinos <laughs> bursting through the wall. Oh, my God. In 1995, I could, that was, she, she was what, like seven or eight? 1989 was when she was born. Six. So yeah, six years old. Yeah, Crazy. That's awesome. What a movie, though. I love Jumanji. I think that is a fucking fantastic family movie. Uh, David Allen Greer is great in it. Yeah, David Allen Greer. And actually, uh, The Hunter the, with the mustache in yes. the movie. Um, that's Van who, Pelt. Van Pelt, yes. That's who I based my Rudyard Kipling impression off of. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, you know, uh, Jumanji was originally a book, a children's book, too. 
I didn't. It was a short story with like a lot of pictures, like big pictures. It wasn't very long. Like a Where the Wild Things Are type of book. Yes, exactly. Uh, beautiful artwork. Cool little storyline. Cool cliffhanger ending where they throw the game away, but then their neighbor kids find it. Oh. And as they're going inside, the, the mom's like... They never finish their games. They just start playing them and then get tired of it or something. Because you know, you're not supposed to start playing right. Jumanji unless you're going to finish it. Unless you're going to finish it. Because otherwise... That's, that's crazy. Uh, you know what they didn't address? Is like how people... like How do you explain the ho- like what happened to the house? Did everything go back to normal? Yeah, Status after quo? Jumanji, it all went back it to just, normal. After and they, they just like the pretended game. like they didn't see a bunch of monkeys and rhinos. And oh, no, everyone across. remembered it. It just all got brought back into the game. Okay. I wonder, so did the cars that like, yeah, got trampled they by elephants, they probably went normal? back to... Just Do, don't you think if people cars. remembered that happening, would they be like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> My car fixed yeah exactly. They probably were. <laughs> David, oh, David Allen Greer, uh, he was, you know, he was a great um, supporting actor in that one. Yeah, uh, Kirsten Dunst, little little old Kirsten Dunst, yeah, and, uh, and the lady in that Robin Williams crush. I don't uh, remember Bonnie her name, Hunt. She, Bonnie Hunt is that her name? Yeah. She's in all sorts of movies in the nineties. Sure is. She was cool. Like that was a great fucking family fun adventure. That's when I say family, I mean like it's good for kids, but it's not just lame and boring. It's fun for adults. Right. Exactly. Too. It doesn't. It's, it's not. You know. Lame, it's not an. Boring. A, it's not an Academy Award winner, but it's it's a fun family action flick. It's better than Ernest movies, and I still love those. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen The Birdcage. Have you no? seen The Birdcage? Uh, I did when I was a kid, and I didn't get it. I didn't get you it. You watched was, it as a kid. I watched it. Yeah. Well, well that's I remember why you it didn't existed, it. and there was like one of those, you know, free HBO weekend type things, and I caught it on there. And I was like twelve or thirteen, and. I was just watching. And I'm just like, so what? The joke is they're gay. I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, this doesn't seem like a family movie because <laughs> I was still like, you know, Robin Williams is a family guy. And then Goodwill Hunting. Neither of us have seen that. We'll no, come out. unfortunately, I, I'm sure you have. I've seen tons of scenes from it. Like, oh, I know. I course. mean, I've made jokes about Matt Damon being the janitor. <laughs> you know. <laughs> And yeah, Robin Williams was, uh, he actually won, he, I said he won the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor for that movie. Uh, he great, gave great advice. I've seen clips of the movie. Tons. Tons of, of clips. It's ingrained in the Everybody culture. knows it. <clears throat> Maybe and that's why I haven't checked you know it out. What's but so weird for me to think is that Flubber and Goodwill Hunting came out the same year. Because I remember going to see Flubber as a family, being a kid going to see it. I was 12 in 97. Yeah, I was 13. So 11 or 12, depending on what month it was. Right. So I, uh, Goodwill Hunting, I feel like, came out later than that. But same year? Same year. What do you think of Patch Adams? Not a fan. It was a little dry. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. I think at that point, I was like, oh, I'm a teenager. Robin Williams comedy isn't for me anymore. You know, oh, I'm a teenager. I got to be with the cool and edgy stuff. It's it's too family friendly. I think the first time I really realized that was fucking Bicentennial Man. I was <laughs> yeah, like, by that I had long no given up. way I am seeing this movie. I was like, fuck this I had movie. long given up at that point. Uh, <laughs> I remember catching What Dreams May Come. What Dreams May Come, though. On, on HBO in college, because lucky for me, being at the SUNY campus of Cortland, they had HBO included. Nice. So, yeah, that was good for a lot of times. There's so many movies that I saw that I probably would have never watched in a million, in a million years. Uh, what Dreams May Come was one of those movies. That movie was but, yeah, it cool. was it was so I remember being surprisingly in, enthralled by it. Yeah, it's it's crazy. It was one of those, oh my god, I have twenty minutes uh before class, I'm gonna check out what's on HBO and then I see it, I'm like, Oh yeah, okay, whatever. And before I knew it, yep, I skipped class to watch the rest of this movie. That's one where I was in high school and my older brother was like, Yeah, you never saw that movie where Robin Williams goes to hell? And I'm like, What? <laughs> For real. Like Yeah, and I'm like, What are you talking it's about? It's more Shut purgatory, up. but and, Apparently, the yeah. only arguments that he was right about, because I could tell you all these arguments we'd get into where he's like, yeah, Arnold Schwarzenegger was in a James Bond movie. And I'll be like, no, he wasn't. <laughs> or something, you know? And like, but apparently, when Wait, it comes to Wait, which one's the real Williams, one and which one's the fake one? <laughs> 
Apparently, when it comes to Robin Williams, though, he wins because I was like, there was no movie where Robin Williams went to hell. And he's like, yeah, he was trying to save his wife. And he went to hell. And I'm like, what? What are you talking about? Yeah. The movie was nuts. Let me ask you this. Back in uh, the early 90s, if someone had, if your brother had told you, do you know that Sylvester Stallone, Jean Claude Van Damme, Arnold Schwarzenegger, and Chuck Norris are all in a movie <laughs> together? You would have like, said, shut what? Shut up, Jeff. Exactly. Stop telling me about your fucking fanfic. <laughs> or, or in reality, you would have said, how can you see the future? Right? When it happened, I'd realize it. I'd be like, Jeff, do you remember when you said that? And he'd be like, no. For real. You'd have been like, okay, so what are tomorrow's lotto numbers? <laughs> Just tell me. I know you know. Stop hiding it. Death to Smoochie was another fucking Oh, that's classic. funny because that was the next one on my mind. Comedy Central rerun of the fucking hour. <laughs> yeah. It's like they I were either so. playing Death to Smoochie or Revenge of the Nerds. That was, but that was another one. Like at this point, I knew Robin Williams had taken on stranger roles you know than just family movies but i was like wow this is raunchy that's what made me realize like his original stand-up gimmick was like racy and uh-huh. you know uh foul mouthed and and that's what made me realize all comics really are like that yeah <laughs> you know Eddie nobody's Murphy, just nobody's just like Bob a born Saget. ingrained uh family man uh, they were all dirty comics and they get a role in a family movie and that becomes a new image <laughs> bob saget's perfect example of that uh, the moment I realized he actually had the most raunchy, disgusting, dirty telling of the aristocrats joke I had ever heard in my entire life, I was floored. I was like, Danny Tanner said what? <laughs> it's worse than the South Park guys. <laughs> oh my God. I don't even know what half of this stuff is yet. <laughs> Did you ever see Robots? Yeah, unfortunately. That was one of the ones, too, where I was like, I am not interested. Well, the thing, at the point when Robots came out, uh, my nephew was a young lad, and my sister was always getting him the new movies that came out. She's like, oh, no, a new Robin Williams movie here, because she's not you know, the type to really take into account good and bad, just family movie, and yeah. all family movies are wholesome. You totally. have that person in your family. I'm sure you do. It's like of course. a cousin or something that's a little older than you, but anyways. So she had the movie, and he... She was like, here, watch it with him. And I was, you know, I babysat him and I, he liked the movie. And I was just like, huh, this. You're like, all right, you like that movie? Word. We're watching Jack now. Yeah, now we're watching, we're watching Jack. You're not ready for this. But <laughs> <laughs> you are two and a half years old. <laughs> too young to be coping with the concept of uh, sadness and death. Oh, no, get comfortable. Goodwill Hunting's next. <laughs> Followed by Good Morning Vietnam, <laughs> just it's, just shots of the. Of, it's not your fault, Craig. You're just what's your what's your nephew? Well, I don't, it's not your fault, nephew. It's not your fault. It's not your fault. As he's just crying. You're just like it's not your fault. It's not your fault. And my nephew's like Uncle Craig. I don't get it. Your sister comes in. You're like, oh hey, just turn the TV off. Oh hey, we're just we're watching, watching Robin Williams movies. SpongeBob. Squarepants. Well, he was in the SpongeBob Squarepants uh, made for TV movie Truth or Square. So was <laughs> Tina Fey. Um... <laughs> Tina Fey's in that fucking everything. <laughs> She's the best actress in the world. There was a few people in there. Uh, I don't remember all of them. You know what was kind of underrated, I think? I don't think RV was that bad. I caught it on TV. I disagree. It was okay. I didn't like it. I didn't think – it's not something I would have went out of my way to see – but I don't think it was horrible. Yeah, I don't it, know. it was a movie that, to me, um, I caught on Comedy Central one day. Oh, they and, were playing on Comedy Central. Yeah, and uh, I, I just I lost interest halfway through and, and changed the channel. I didn't think it was that bad. It's or not, I had like, to leave and wasn't fair. broken up about it. You know, like, you lost interest, fine. But like, I don't think it was horrible. Like, I've heard a lot of people be like, "That movie's shit." It's that not his worst movie ever. Horrible. I'm pretty you know? sure Film Brain did. Popeye a of was it. probably the worst movie ever of his. So, <laughs> and again, I think that's the first one I ever saw with Robin Williams. And it doesn't necessarily suffer because of his portrayal of Popeye. Right, right. It There's suffers some because about of Popeye that are very direction cool. and writing and screenplay and yeah, you know, because the the way it's presented is kind of cool. Like as the a kid, I actors... still loved it. I was like, ha, ah, Popeye, Popeye, he's doing Popeye. <laughs> yeah, and the way yeah. the actors look like cartoon characters and kind of act like it is kind of cool. But... It was a bad movie because uh, because it was written poorly. Did. Did you know he was on a show called The Crazy Ones on CBS? 
No, I did not. That was like one of the last things he was in. Okay. Uh, I it's sad because it got canceled before probably before it got good. I still haven't seen any of it, but I didn't even know it existed up until yesterday. Wow. And obviously you didn't know it existed up until now. Is it good? It's I don't good. know. I don't you know. Watched it. We're, oh. Yeah, let's uh let's go. Let's uh try to find clips from it and you know what? You be the judge. You go and watch it. Is it like a stupid bullshit CBS sitcom, which is probably why I never bothered to watch it in the first place, even though I didn't know it existed, because I, for one, do not enjoy CBS programming for the most part. Most, most sitcoms, sitcoms nowadays aren't that great. Unless it's community. Community. And they're stuck to Yahoo now. So It's always sunny. Is that still going? That's on Comedy Central. I mean, like main, yeah. Modern sitcoms. Modern Family's about it. Aren't always that That's great. the only one I really like right now that's on... Uh, the big three primetime networks, NBC, ABC, CBS. Big Bang Theory is still going. Uh, from what I hear, there's like contract uh, hate or something. I don't know. Apparently, they think they're not getting paid enough. Fuck you. You're an actor. Uh, you're making millions of dollars for episodes. Just I don't, take it. I don't like Big Bang Theory. I know you don't. I think my girlfriend agrees with you. I think it's funny sometimes. I don't go out of my way to watch it, but uh. if it's on and I'm bored... There's nothing else to do, which in the last six, seven months of my life is a, is not even a, there, there's nothing, there's never been a moment in my life where I'm like, oh, I'm bored and I have nothing to do in the last six, seven months of right. my entire life. So that doesn't happen. It's probably the last time I saw it was about a year ago. Well, hopefully you will be able to, if not see, at least hear Robin Williams in the upcoming 2015 Monty Python reunion film, Ooh. absolutely anything um, Just his voice is going to be there? Well, it stars Simon Pegg, and Robin Williams provided the voice for Simon Pegg's character's dog. Ah, that's sweet. So we already did the voicing for it? Well, Simon Pegg said that he's not sure if Robin Williams finished the voice or not. So right now it's still up in the air. Did he finish it? Are they going to cut Simon it? Simon Pegg Are they isn't get sure. Somebody else to finish it? Are they Why gonna... don't they just ask Terry Gilliam? What, to do Robin Williams? No, if he finished it or not. Oh, <laughs> I thought you meant to do the voice. I was like, <laughs> No, Terry Gilliam, you do the voice now. You take over. Oh. <laughs> but I I don't know. I People are saying, you know, if it's going to be like, oh, let's get someone else to imitate his voice. Let's get Dan Castellaneta like we did with the genie. Mm. You know, it, it, that's kind of mm. cheap and like, uh, mm. exactly. But you, you will time, be able to tell. I don't want them to just can this. Like, come on, man. They finished the movie with Heath Ledger in it. Like, you know, like, figure it out, dude. Figure it out. Work around it. Figure it well, out. Well, the I thing want with Heath Robin Ledger Williams. is they had already finished all the scenes. Not all of them. Okay, so they changed the ending. Just t- Oh, you're talking... No, are you thinking of uh, The Imaginarium of Dr. Parnassus? That, and there was some other movie. Dark Knight. <laughs> No, not Dark Knight. Oh. Like there was some other movie okay. that he didn't finish. I thought. Well, they, I was thinking the Dark Knight. They had already finished all the filming. Yeah, Dark Knight. They did. And you're but, like, not all of them. I'm like, I think so. But, no, but there was oh, some you're thinking of the Imaginarium where, of Doctor Parnassus. Was that the one where that was somebody the one he was else filming. played his role? It was. For uh, some of the they, he ended up. They ended up switching it a little bit, and uh, yeah, it was his best friends Jude Law, Colin Farrell, and okay, Johnny Depp. Okay. No. Yeah. No, yeah. I remember Johnny Depp being involved. It probably was. Maybe yeah. I'm wrong. But Yeah, they they finished up they they switched uh how the movie was going a little bit to make it all work and they finished Dude, you know, they can work this out with Robin Williams voicing the dog. And that was even live action where like they completely was now this character is a new being of person with a different thought process. Yeah. yeah. So we can hopefully look forward to that and we can always look back at all these Awesome movies and great times. I know I've and spent the last couple of weeks watching Robin Williams movies. Uh, Aladdin, Good Morning Vietnam, Dead Poets Society, Fisher King, Jumanji. I've seen all of them in the past <laughs> like two weeks. It's, it, it is really surreal that he's gone and that there's so many people that would, would have loved to you know, talk him out of it. And it happened anyway. And there's nothing we can do about that. We can only move forward and, and honor... The man for what he was. Good night, sweet prince. Is that from one of his movies? No, but it's from, it's <laughs> like a, you know, like almost like a folk okay. tradition thing. Yeah, I mean, here's, maybe we can wrap up with a quote by Robin Williams. Uh, Please do. He says, uh, Robin Williams on death. Well, you just have to try and keep it in perspective. You have to remember the best and the worst. In America, they really do mythologize people when they die. 
And no doubt that's what's going to happen. We're going to mythologize Robin Williams, and there's nothing wrong with that. I no, encourage not at it. all. I encourage it, and uh, I don't encourage. And let's mythologize his beard because you're going to die either way, so you don't have to rush to death to be mythologized. Yeah. Enrich the mythology a little bit before it's set in stone. I but, still uh, say mythologize the beard. His Goodwill Hunting beard, where like he just has the little bit of gray right down the middle of the chin, and the rest of it's all brown. I don't know. I'm a huge fan of beard culture, as you can, as you know, <laughs> I have a beard myself. But it's one of like it's one of my top five favorite beards of all time. <laughs> just wait for the other four. Who knows? But really. It's we, we we're doing what you wanted. We're remembering the best and the worst. We 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 took a few jabs at your uh, you know slightly lesser quality movies. We uh, celebrated your your great movies. We we talked about the hardships that you faced and the fucking and all the great animals things. that he loved and him making uh, Coco the monkey laugh. I don't think we talked about that. Ah, damn it! Did that really happen? That did happen. He made Coco the monkey laugh. Yeah, or Coco the ape, the, the gorilla. Ape. Gorilla, gorilla ape. He did. I think that was just me trying to shoehorn the rat that in because I've realized but I that forgot happened. about it. It did happen. How did he make it? He was a good friend with Coco. That's amazing. We Coco need to do an episode about yeah. Coco sooner. We or should. Later. <laughs> but we oh man, like thank you, like thanks for all those fucking awesome fucking movies and memories and uh, and thanks for being such a cool guy. Thanks for getting Conan O'Brien a bike. Thanks for cheering up Christopher Reeve in the hospital. Thank you for like, everything you've done, Robin Williams. Thanks for making Coco laugh. Thanks for being the reason I ever bothered to try Im- bad impressions in the first place. <laughs> or semi-decent ones. Well, no, you tried to do good impressions. Tried to do good impressions. You succeeded and, uh, at doing bad impressions. Fair enough. <laughs> uh, we, uh, he deserves nothing less than, but much more than... Then canonization in the Fairpoint uh, uh, canon. We knight the Sir, Sir Robin, Robin Williams. Williams, the first. You shall forever be known in the Fairpoint archives as the Sir Robin Williams. Who is it? So who's in there? Sir Robin Williams. Sir Michael Crichton. Sir H.R. Geiger. And Sir Paul Bellini. For the kids in the hall troop. Thank you. Thanks, man. Um, if you guys enjoyed the episode, if you'd like to hear more episodes, we're on iTunes. We're on Pod Bay. We're on all sorts of podcast directories. Any of those, if there's uh, rate and review things, five stars, please. But, you know, if you, th- if, th- if you think we're only worthy of four stars, go for it. But Basically, if you think we're worthy of less, then fuck you. What he's saying is leave us a review, please. If you're, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Finding it and-, and subscribe us anywhere. Subscription if, is easy in case, you know, you listen to us once, you're like, hey, I like those guys. But, you know, I sometimes forget to <laughs> uh, download the next podcast. So it'll automatically download it for you. Boom. You're welcome. Thank you. And if we're not at a podcast directory that's easily accessible to you, send us an email at fairpointpodcast at yahoo.com. Let us know. Or there's plenty of other ways to get a hold of us. You mean like the Facebook channel? Sure. Or the YouTube channel. Sure. Both of those? Facebook page, YouTube channel. Yes. Facebook.com slash Fairpoint Podcast and YouTube.com slash Fairpoint Podcast. Go check out that ice challenge. We, uh, we called we, oh, Blurry yeah, we Photos up to, the, up to the plate. Blurry Photos? We're still at war with them. So, so it's a Facebook war. It's not a it's not a war, war of actual on. physical violence. But no. we need you to like our page. They're, the, the war is too close for comfort. It really is. Like I, I like it how it's kind of up the ante, and we both had a pretty big uh, it, spike. It's a like war. It's that's you gotta like, with whoever gets yeah. the most likes. It's very simple. Yeah, but but it's getting a little close. And you know we're on Twitter at Fairpoint Pod, um, Tumblr, FairpointPodcast.tumblr.com. Remember, for the time being, if you follow us, we will follow you. Oh yeah, and anywhere that we can follow. What a captain. I'll follow you to the end of the earth, I will. And, you know, SoundCloud, um, we're all over the place. If we're not somewhere, if you can't find us somewhere, shoot us a line, let us know. Shoot us a line if you want to hear a topic. I don't shoot see us why a line you wouldn't be able to find us. Up. <laughs> find us on lots of shit. Right. Come on. Well, I'm Nathan Kapiser. And I'm Craig Lewis. Until next week, Nanu. Nanu, Nanu. Talk to you next time.